E aí, galera, tudo em paz com vocês? Sejam todos muito bem-vindos. Tielo Emerson aqui, começamos mais um vídeo para o canal Metal Musicast. Hoje eu tenho ao meu lado meu amigo Tiago Raul Mauro e vamos entrevistar, vocês já estão vendo na tela, Marco e Etala. Tiago, tudo bem com você? Seja muito bem-vindo, meu amigo. Salve, Tielo, salve, amigos do Metal Musicast. Dessa vez, junto com o Tielo aqui, fazendo mais essa grande entrevista com esse ícone do Metal Mundial, Marco e Etala. Great, great. And now I'm going to start talking in English with Marco. Hello, Marco. Be welcome. Hello. I realized that I started to look this exploded this late in the day. But I'm here. Yes. I'm great. Too fine, actually, great. guys. So how are you guys? We are fine. great. We are great. Fine. Great. Because it's uh, it's a great honor to us talking to you. Well... Uh, yeah, for a Savonian country boy, that sometimes feels a little bit odd still, but uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Okay, okay. So, uh, Tiago, you can start to make a question, please. Yes. So, Marco, to reach this current moment in your career, we need to go back in time a little to 2021. And you wrote a farewell letter to Nightwish, saying that streaming companies demand a lot of from artists, and that the music industry is very concerned about uh, profits and less about the artists. And in 2002, you re reevaluated the situation and began to return to stage with your solo cover. So I would like to know uh, how crucial. The pandemic was for that moment of yours, and what made you change your mind about to retire? This was the, the well, the pandemic was the time that that uh, actually had to sit down and give yourself a time to think about things and all that. And uh, also, well, I had been having a lot of serious trouble already. And it gave me time to also do some serious therapy because you you cannot really do it on the road. The system used to be that you always have to be person there in person and all that, which the pandemic changed that we could do like psychiatric evaluations, even though we're through a video. So and Thiago. I, oh, I just sorry. realized that there, there had been I had realized that uh, there had been a lot of years of bad things in my head and I was getting more depressed and more anxiety, anxious and everything and it just things went dark. I had to leave everything behind. It was not just a band, it was it was like the circles, the music business, there were everything and the and the yeah, the business is also It's a bit frustrating to see how everything is going into chain companies and uh, disappearing out there while while songwriter actually is the banana republic of the industry. And it, it's um it it's um it's your mental and spiritual capital for their capitalism. Um in Not sure. So it's I'm not pleased about it any these days either. But then again, I also I also have a very very strong musical streak in my backbone. And when I got out of everything, I even got out of Finland, went to Spain, and got a base from there. Stayed stayed out of the things for a year, and in that year happened a lot. I talked with a lot of specialists. We went looking for answers, and they were found. Uh, and we sold. Uh, uh, well, in the end, uh, feelings of anxiety and, and uh, depression and worthlessness—they were symptoms. It seems that I'm ADHD positive, <clears throat> which is a very funny thing to find out when you're 56. But. In the end, it started to tell me all kinds of things. It suddenly realized that, okay, that's why I used to be the, uh, from, a, from a bunch of kids from a little village. I used to be the spaceman, the astronaut of that bunch and all that. So a lot of history makes sense. Also like an, 
insanely like overactive imagination and also need to solve some solve problems and find solutions is also something that has been useful in songwriting i think because songwriting songwriting is in music it's kind of a mathematical uh, equations and solutions to emotional things and then you write lyrics with a overactive imagination where wild association builds up a lot of really nice things yeah it's a pretty good thing for a rocker also being wildly impulsive on stage so it's it, it's brought bad things and it brought good things but then of course the whole therapy like attitude to it changed the subject changed and medications changed and within three weeks i was feeling way better within a few months better than in past seven years but, so what but, do you do you start doing some shows yeah but i think for you a uh, circle wider is more than uh, mathematics is, is for your heart i i think yeah, so, that's what I said, that it's so overwhelming, that it's kind of, it's mathematical combinations, equations, which you connect to emotional output. It's all of that thing. It's, a, I see music as a miraculous thing. And it's yeah. qu quite interesting, you are talking about emotions and, and emotions and from your heart. And I got a, a question sent by the journalist Gustavo Maiato. And Marco Maiato is one of the biggest uh, nightwish specialists of the world. And right. he sent this question. I'm going to read for you, okay? All right. Uh, uh, you recently came to Brazil in a tour with Aneke, former The Gathering. You played some solo songs, cover songs from many bands. But one great moment was when you played The Islander, the only one from Nightwish. Why did you choose this particular song to be the only one from Nightwish? And what's your relation with this song nowadays? Well, it's one of the personal highlight moments, actually, in the musical history, because I wrote the music for this particular song. And of course, since it's acoustic, <laughs> Even originally, it was like a no-brainer to choose it from Nightwish catalog to also play there. Of course, Thomas wrote the lyrical stuff and everything, and he wrote a really great story for the song. So, uh, yeah, I'm still proud of it. I want to play it. Great. And Thiago, go on. Uh, Marco, uh, recently I interviewed Tadia, and she's, she's very happy with this new friendship with you. For her, this is a new friendship, a new moment. So I would like to know what the moment of meeting Tarja was like for you. What did you, did you feel? It was a thing that I actually had through already some years back, because we both were doing the Ras Castellola, this heavy Christmas, Christmas tour in Finland and we were going to be doing the same shows so taste the thoughts of it and a lot of years had gone so what I realized was that all that the past hassle and bad wives and arguments and uh, overclocked media coverage and everything which was so heavy and bad, yeah bad shit at the time and a lot of it uh, it had passed it had gone over it we had recovered all of that and, but one thing was missing a friend that's what you still lost and that's the one thing that i find out that that is but something that still digs at me and i decided to take the subject up when we had a moment after a show and there were some a little bit moist corners of the eyes and all that and from, I guess from that moment on, it also, we started to be like okay with each other. 
I know already by the end of that tour, she said, that Monica, you're such a different guy these days. And, and I think it was 2017, 2018 or something like that, already a few years back. And now when we got together for the, for the Phantom of the Opera there at the Swiss Festival, it was also a moment which kind of, well, you, I saw what kind of an emotional impact it made on people to hear us do that thing together. And of course we get a pretty powerful sounding duet. That's not a bad thing at all. I like it a lot. And then seeing the, like people like uh, having their grins wide up to their ears and somewhere are quite a lot actually and in tears at the same time. And yeah, how can you not feel good yourself that I made this happen, that this kind of impact for people that there's thousands and they're feeling fucking good. I feel that too. Great. And uh, the, the second question from Gustavo Maiato, uh, I'm going to read again. Uh, it's about your band Tarot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Last year, your band Tarot was back in the business and you have more shows ahead planned in European festivals. Yeah. How did you feel to play Tarot songs again? And can we, can we expect a new album, a new record? The album is not in the works. I mean, we got some demo stuff unfinished and all that, but we also would have to have to go to the studio together and start working on things for real. And when the touring is a little bit out of question, my brother has been very open about the thing because he's basically the like you're the caretaker and the nurse for his wife, who is a pretty heavily sick. So he, he cannot really do tours, and I mean he's the guitar player in the band, and we've had a we've had a tightly groove for decades. And the drummer, our drummer, it's better he's gone because he he got sick. He got sick with ALS, and that's a bitch of a disease, and he died. So it took like ten something to even get to this point. But okay, we can actually play a few shows together for fun and use a friend which we've known also quite a while as a drummer so we're going to be doing these few festival shows but no touring because of my brother's situation and uh, possible future music totally open in the air but it was fun to do those two shows we'll see great Thiago, please so uh, about this tour with Tadia uh, I talked talk to, to her and he, he, she talked about the song Phantom of the Opera. That's the song for her that represents the, this partnership at you and Tadia. Do you agree with this song is representing this friendship? Okay. So... So that's a question that the, does the song represent the partnership? I guess in a way, it's got the lyrical stuff and, and it's got the roles and everything. So then you can kind of own it, can't you? That's enough on, of an answer. Yes. Marco, can, can you hear me? Can you see me? That's did okay. I, I, can you see me as well? You guys yes, it is, it's, the connection is not so good. Okay, That's okay, I think Marco. There's a little bit of a, yeah, there was a little bit of a, um, vo your voice is disappearing. I didn't know where we were going. I think okay. it's the connection. Yeah. Tiago, vamos lá. Também está estourando o tempo. Uh, the, the time I think that the time is coming over, and if Thiago could say something to finish this interview, please, Thiago. So, uh, what you, the fans can expect from your shows with Tadia in Brazil? You play solo solo songs, Nightwish songs, the duets with Tadia. What the fans can expect? Well, we try to make it so that will give the best possible combo of things so 
with the Nightwish songs, there are a few that have really, really good duet stuff and it's strong. So we're going to be doing a couple at least. But we've also checked into the solo stuff from both groups and, uh, and some, some things. So it's, uh, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a combo of things. So that there's going to be something for everyone. Of course, some people see that um, doing night which is a bit lame. It would be if we didn't have other stuff. It, will, it would be really lame, so you can't really rely on that. It would be lame and cheap. So, of course, we're going to be doing other things as well. Nice. But those songs Great. are those songs are brilliant. Vocal-wise, um, there's no denying of Thomas' songwriting. That's the one constant thing that has been the secret of the whole band's success all the years. So, he's written some really nice things to sing. Great, Marco. Thanks for joining us today. It's a great pleasure talking to you. And I hope to see you in Brazil. Okay, thank you so much you for your time. To... Thank yes. you for your attention. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. I'll see you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Tiagão, finalizamos aqui a entrevista com... Marco Ietala, curtiu trocar ideia com o cara? Como que é, Tiago? O que você acha? O que você Curti, achou? ele estava bem aberto, pena que a conexão dele não estava muito boa, né? Então, às vezes, travava para a gente ouvir. Então, se você, percebe, se você que está vendo essa entrevista perceber que a gente está meio... Porque a conexão, não via o áudio e dava uma travada. Então, mas o que ele falou foi muito, foi muito bem. E acho que valeu para os fãs de Nightwish... É, e, da, e da Tária vai ser um momento único, então quem puder ir, vá, porque não sei se vai ter muitas vezes isso não é verdade, eu no começo eu estranhei um pouco, eu fiquei tentando mexer aqui no volume também, porque ele falou um pouco baixo, né Tiago pelo menos para é. mim, aqui, pro meu som tava um pouco baixo e dava umas travadas e, e é curioso né, porque ele tem toda aquela aura assim de de um cara nórdico né, que a gente imagina não, mas é... Ele é muito... É, a palavra acho que é fofo, né? Ele é muito fofo. <risos> e você tem o serviço aí, Tiago? Eu não tenho das datas, cara. Eu devia ter trazido aqui para quem está assistindo saber. O Tiago procura aí rapidamente para quem assistiu até aqui. É, saber as datas, as cidades dos shows. Eu fiquei sabendo que quando a gente realiza essa entrevista hoje, hoje é dia 22 de fevereiro, já tem show sold out aí. Já não tem mais ingresso em algumas cidades. Eu não sei exatamente é. qual. Você ah, achei que... aqui, ó. tem aqui, ó. É, em São Paulo, é, vão ser, até onde eu vi aqui, são seis shows no Brasil, e começa em São Paulo, no dia 8 de março, no Tokyo Marine Hall, ingressos no site da Eventim, tem em Porto Alegre, dia 9 de março, no Opinião, ingressos no Simpla Bileto, dia 10 de março, em Curitiba, no Ópera de Arame, essa casa de show é uma das mais bonitas do Brasil. Já fui, posso confirmar. É, de fato, uma casa muito foda. Ingressos na Bileto. Dia 12 de março, em Belo Horizonte, no Mr. Rock. Ingressos da Fan Society. 13 de março, em Brasília, no Toinha Brasil Show. Ingressos no Clube do Ingresso. E dia 14 do 3, do Rio de Janeiro, no Sacadura 154. Ingressos também no Clube do Ingresso. Eu acho que mais informações é na página da Top Link, que é a produtora que está trazendo tanto a Tária quanto o Marco. Então, fiquem ligados que, pelo que os dois falaram, vai ter muita música do Nightwish. Então, é, digamos que metade do Nightwish original vai estar tá lá. É isso aí. E os fãs que acompanham o Nightwish há muito tempo, acho que, tirando o Thomas lá, eles... É, não vou falar idolatram, mas admiram mais né, a, a Tária, Sim. obviamente a vocalista tá ali, a voz da banda e o Marco, né, acho que por esse jeito que você falou, né, Thiago, ele tem esse jeito que se conecta muito com os fãs e, é, tá aí... e, o, e, o Mar, e o Marco não é o baixista original do Nightwish, teve outro baixista antes mas por conta dele cantar também ele acabou virando a segunda voz da banda, então tinha, tinha muitas músicas que tem duetos, então músicas que ele só ele canta 
Então, acaba, acaba que ele também é, é, um, é um vocalista do, do Nightwish. E, e a quando voz ele é saiu, boa, né, Tiago? É, tem, né, cara? É bonita tem a um voz. contraste. E ele foi o, é o único que cantou com as três né, vocalistas do Nightwish. É. E... Então, ele tem um papel importante. É. E ele tinha saído da indústria musical, voltou, você começou a entrevista fazendo essa pergunta para ele, é. foi muito interessante. Ele deu uma resposta assim profunda, né? De, de é. pessoal, né? Não podia ser diferente, porque as razões Sim. pelas quais ele decidiu é, sair da indústria musical há alguns anos foram questões fortes para ele, né? Achei você vê que a pandemia afetou as pessoas de várias maneiras, né? É. Teve, teve pessoas que é, ficaram para baixo, teve pessoas que aproveitaram, entre aspas, a pandemia para criar novos projetos, teve pessoas que não souberam lidar com a falta dos seus trabalhos. Então, cada um lidou de uma maneira com a pandemia e a maneira do, do, do Marco, acho que para cuidar da saúde mental dele, foi ter saído da banda e ficar é, imerso nele, procurar ajuda. E, como humano, eu acho que ele fez a coisa certa, né? Porque Sim. primeiro vem você Bom, e depois... Né? O seu, é, primeiro vem você e depois o seu trabalho, né? se concentrou em buscar o seu alicerce emocional para continuar. E eu li duas perguntas do Gustavo Maiato, se, o, se ele assistir até aqui, um abraço, um grande abraço aí para o Gustavo, para o Maiato, Gustavo Maiato, e a gente falou sobre a banda Tarot, né? Eu falo Tarot Sim. em português, mas para ele Sim. a gente manda uma pronúncia mais inglesada, que eu gosto muito. Tiago, você curte? Curto, é um heavy tradicional finlandês, né? Cara, Tô muito pegada... bom, cara, é. É uma banda antiga, né, Flamengo? Vem dos anos 80. É, é. É, como, é, é como se fossem as nossas bandas daqui, dos anos 80, do metal tradicional, que tem a sua parcela de público lá, mas não conseguiu sair tanto da Finlândia, né? Você não vê, não, não tiveram grandes turnês, então eles ficaram mais local, né? Tipo, uma banda grande e local, né? E pela resposta dele aí, né, alguns shows podem acontecer, ele vai tocar músicas da banda, mas difícil é, engatar de novo em novos, novos é. álbuns. Eu acho que é, o caso dele solo é o caso de alguns músicos que são de uma banda e vão para outra banda grande. O nome dele fica tão grande com essa banda que não faz sentido ele voltar para. O nome dele é mais forte do que, do que as bandas que ele passou. É. Então. Exato. Mas foi, foi um papo bacana, a gente manteve com respeito ao tempo. Estourou assim alguns minutos, um pouquinho, porque a gente teve um em off um, um tanto antes trocando ideia com ele, preparando a entrevista, para quem não assiste, fique sabendo, a gente troca um pouco ideia antes para acertar isso, e eu quis respeitar o, o horário, porque embora fosse a última, Tiago, e desse para a gente abusar um pouco, né, Sim. quando a gente faz a última, a gente... mas eu percebi ele um tanto, acho que cansado já, ele está é. há três dias fazendo essas baterias de entrevistas aí, às vezes o cara também já não está mais é, com aquele ânimo todo para responder, eu falei, não vou acelerar muito, não vou forçar, é, quando começou a cair a conexão dele, a dar uma falhada ali, eu falei, ah, vamos encerrar também, porque senão a gente estende um pouco o tempo, desrespeito o tempo foi combinado, ainda pode ser que dê um problema técnico aí, fica, é. o resultado fica ruim, né? Sim. Né, Thiago, Acho que no, fim, no, fim, no final foi, foi legal, tem, teve boas respostas para os fãs, e é isso, vão, vão no show, porque é a oportunidade que você tem para ver esses dois juntos. Né? É isso aí, e inscreva-se no canal Metal Musicast, trouxemos a Tária para trocar ideia aqui, Trouxemos agora o Marco e a Tala para trocar ideia aqui. Então, o canal Metal Music é se ligado aí no que vocês, fãs do Nightwish, gostam. Acho e importante... Fiquem ligados que vai ter surpresas boas para vocês que acompanham o canal. Todo mundo vai ganhar, vocês vão ganhar. Vai ser uma surpresa muito legal. É isso aí. Conversamos ontem, né, Tiago? O Tiago já tem alguns contatos aqui e a gente vai depois explicar para vocês. Tem coisa nova para o Metal Musicast pegar aí no... aqui no ano de 2024 e dá acelerada aí nos vídeos e nos conteúdos, né, Tiagão? Vai ser bacana. Sim. E todo mundo, o, principalmente você que tá vendo a gente, vai ganhar. Você que... Vou dar uma, um spoiler. Você que gosta de CD físico, você vai ganhar. É isso aí. Canal Metal Musicast chegando na área aí. Valeu, Tiagão. Muito obrigado por mais Valeu. essa parceria aqui. Tamo junto. Fiquem ligados no Metal Musicast. Forte abraço a todos. Valeu. Valeu.